Safe sedation is critically important to performing any type of endoscopy. While we each have patients that may or may not be able to do endoscopy without any sedation, the majority of patients really require sedation uh, in order to get a quality colonoscopy where the procedure is done properly, as well as to help with patient pain, as well as patient access. Capnography is one of the most important ways that we can implement safe sedation uh, and really get an early uptick on understanding hypoxemia in our patients as well as how they maintain adequate ventilation. So capnography looks at basically the expired respiratory gases and measures the CO2 concentration. So what we get at the end of the day is basically the end tidal CO2 the respiratory rate, and a time-based waveform, which is called a capnogram. By one glance, we can look at capnography and it can tell us if the patient has adequate ventilation or if it's predictive towards uh, the patient might be going towards hypoxemia. Capnography tells us quicker than oxygen saturation monitors or pulse oximeters. Most studies show that there's an average of 30 to 45 second early warning for patients so that we're able to make modifications. So capnography by itself doesn't change the outcome in a patient, but it gives a warning to the anesthetist, the endoscopist, or the clinical nursing staff to change the patient's position, reduce sedation, perform a jaw thrust maneuver in order to relieve the obstruction. COVID-19 has radically changed how we manage procedures and patients. Patients that have been afflicted inpatient with COVID-19 have been found to be sicker, have multiple cardiopulmonary issues, and require intensive monitoring in order to do safe procedures. We have found that capnography has played a critical role in managing this patient population. So the current guidelines are a little bit discordant uh, as far as capnography use and moderate or deep sedation. Currently, the anesthesia guidelines, the ASA guidelines, ask that any patient going under moderate or deep sedation be monitored with capnography in order to reduce hypoxemic events. The American Society of Gastrointestinal Endoscopy as well as the European Society of Gastrointestinal Endoscopy, however, do not share the same opinion. And in their findings, uh, what they have suggested is capnography should be used for higher risk procedures longer procedures or procedures that require deep sedation like ERCP, EUS, as well as in the pediatric population. So there's a true discordance in current use of capnography by our societies. We use capnography in both our inpatient and our outpatient practice. Capnography helps us identify uh, patients that are getting hypoxemic earlier. It helps us with changing of our safety mechanisms for appropriate GI sedation, be it changing the position or reducing the amount of sed sedatives that we're giving the patient. And it gives us a safety net for the type of patient population that we see. biggest reason is the discordance in data in why we haven't adopted capnography as a standard for every procedure for moderate or deep sedation. One of the biggest problems with getting high quality data has been the relative infrequency of complicated events and side effect events uh, that occur during endoscopy or colonoscopy. What we are seeing is a change in our patient population. We're seeing more patients that are heavier with complicated medical diseases, or with complicated medical regimens that are coming into our outpatient endoscopy centers. 
to provide safety in this pa pa patient population, I think it's critical that we implement capnography at an early time point and we use it for both moderate as well as deep sedation.